In this video, I'm going to add another dimension to CNC machining. We are going to engrave and carve some really cool stuff and almost break something while machining aluminum. Welcome to the test of the Snapmaker's rotary module. Before we start, I just want to say that this video is not sponsored by the Snapmaker. Also, the previous video wasn't sponsored by the Snapmaker. They are not paying me to say anything in this video. They did send me the machine and the rotary module for free, but I'm totally unbiased to them. And I will tell you my honest review. I will tell you what I think, what I like and what I don't like about this machine. Let's start as always with the packing and unboxing of the rotary module. I've never used a four axis CNC machine before, so it would be really cool to test how it works, what you can and cannot do, and maybe in the future, you know, design my own for the Indemu, because why not? So, it's unboxing time. Just as it was with the Snapmaker machine, the rotary module and the safety switch are really nicely and safely packed in beautiful boxes. Everything is nicely labeled and you have a really cool, clear instruction that is super easy to follow. Together with the rotary module, you get a safety switch that is attached here, currently out of frame. And the safety switch is a very, very useful thing for such a machine because when you are machining something and then something goes wrong, you can just click the safety switch and it stops the operation and you are safe. You can save milling bits and the wool machine and the material thanks to such a simple tool. Unfortunately, there is no way to buy the safety switch without the rotary module, which is a bit weird and hopefully will change in the future. When it comes to the assembly process, it is extremely easy. There are just few screws to connect and everything is nicely explained in the instruction. Really nice drawings and clear explanation. I really like that. You basically have to connect this part to this part to the base and then screw the base to the table. And that's it. One cable to connect to the main controller and it's ready. Also, I had to update the firmware in the Snapmaker, but that was really easy. I just had to upload a special file to the USB stick. If you have access to the Wi-Fi, you can just easily connect it to the internet and then click auto update and it will automatically update the firmware. And now I need to find the proper file and it should update the machine. And as you can see, you may think that preparing G-code for four axis CNC machining is actually really hard. And I expected that there will be some problems with that, but actually it is incredibly easy thanks to their software. You can do everything in the Snapmaker Luban and it works really, really well. Amazing thing is that you can actually download an STL file from Thingiverse and you can use that in order to machine well anything you want. And it is really easy to set up. I will tell you more about this process later in the video. That's what I have right now. As you can see, it's uh, some kind of a lion. And as for now, let's go with the provided material with this pink kind of chalk. I'm not really sure what it is. And also I will use the milling bit uh, that was actually in the accessory box for the rotary module. It's time to just mount the material. So now we can click. Yeah, to be honest, I don't know what to click now. So let's grab the instruction. Origin assistant is what I need. So that's here. It's really cool that you have this kind of videos on the screen so that you basically know really well what to do without reading anything. After setting up everything and setting up the zero point correctly, or at least I thought I'm setting up the zero point correctly, I started milling and after a minute or two, I hit the tailstock and I milled a small hole in the tailstock, which is pretty impressive because this thing is made out of steel. Of course, I broke the milling bit a few seconds later, but well, the hole is there. I sent a message to the Snapmaker. I told them what happened and they said that Actually, few users also face the same situation and they are going to fix that in the next version of the instructions. You can choose to install the tailstock. Oh, I don't want to install the tailstock this time. It 
it took about two or three hours to machine the result is actually really nice there is a lot of detail in the lion and it was quite easy for the machine to handle even at a full depth of cut 17.5 millimeters second thing that was also the model provided by the snapmaker was a chest piece i decided to use the same material and I just mounted it, I prepared the G-code again, and well, here is the result. This pink material is great if you want to start and learn how to actually use the rotary module, but later you are probably going to use something else, for example wood. And few words about wood that I used in this video. Last year, together with my dad, we cut some old branches of a fruit tree at my grandma's village, and actually that is exactly the material that I used to machine on the rotary module. My dad prepared that on a wood lay for me and this wood is actually a perfect material because it is quite dense and quite hard so you can get some really nice details in the objects that you are machining. Machining time 3 hours and 37 minutes quite a lot of time but I was really careful with the feed rate and depth of cut I could easily go with like 3 millimeters per pass maybe even more than that here is the same horse but different g-code with different settings uh, this time machined out of wood once everything is ready for the machining there is a very very useful feature that can save you a lot of time and material and it's right here it's called run boundary and when you click that the machine will kind of like draw a rectangle on this piece just to show you where it will move the max position of y x and in this case b uh, just so that you can make sure that it's not going to hit the uh, these elements or anything else and that you have material everywhere very very useful feature while machining, as always, I have been experimenting quite a lot with the feed rate and depth of cut to find good values and I found that 5mm is as deep as you can go per pass with this kind of wood and 4mm is a safe value and when it comes to feed rate, I just went with the default value and I have been adjusting it live on the touchscreen while machining. And then I thought that it would be really cool to machine a wool chest set and I started machining a few chest figures one was unfortunately unsuccessful but then I realized I would need 32 figures in total in order to machine a wool chest set and one figure is like two or three hours of machining that would take a lot a lot of time so I decided to give up on this idea maybe in the future I will finish that add some more figures and maybe create my own uh, chessboard that would be a really cool project hopefully I will do that in the future then I asked my dad to prepare a bigger piece of wood for me because I wanted to machine a dragon from SpaceX and I actually did. Uh, the diameter of this piece of wood was 60 millimeters and this is as big as you can go when it comes to the diameter. The maximum length is 170 millimeters. And now I will show you how I actually prepared the G-code for the dragon. In order to import the STL file, you have to click add and then choose your STL file. This will generate a bitmap based on that file and as you can see the placement is not really the best for this kind of model and you can change that here in the placement phase i will go with front i think should be okay and as you can see right now it is placed correctly now i will adjust the dimensions of my workpiece that's 110 millimeters by 60 millimeters of the diameter and now you can simply resize this bitmap in order to change the dimensions of the object you want to machine. In case you make that too big, it will turn red so that you know that it's too big and you can just make it a bit smaller. This red rectangle is actually the area of where the chug is, so you shouldn't place anything right here. And once that's ready, you can click process. And here in the process tab, you can just select this thing and click create toolpath. Now we can choose this straight groove milling bit and we only have to change the step down i will go with four millimeters that should be a safe value and click save and then you can click preview and here you can see actually the toolpath so that's not really super useful in this case but once you click the simulation you can turn on the toolpath and now you can see the actual model and how it will look like 
after machining and that's it after that you can just click generate g-code and save it on the usb stick and you are ready to machine as always before machining anything run the boundary test <laughs> The machine handles wood pretty easy and depending on your STL model you can get nice or really good results. I'm really happy with the dragon and kind of happy with the chest pieces. And then the obvious question is, but can it machine something else? Like for example aluminum, so I decided to try that. If you think that trying aluminum on a rotary module is a stupid idea, you may be right, of course, but you also may be wrong and that's why I'm here. I will test it. 58 hours of machining is not something that I want to try but actually this time is usually uh, overestimated and here is the aluminum piece I'm pretty sure it will end terribly and probably I'm going to break the bit even though I'm going at the pass of 0.1 millimeters and unfortunately that wasn't the best idea the first model that I wanted to machine was actually a fan that I quickly just designed in Fusion 360 and I wanted to use for that the straight groove milling bit but I broke it after probably 4 or 5 minutes of machining unfortunately. Also the piece wasn't really well centered so that was a bit of a problem. So later I thought that maybe with 3.175mm milling bit it will be successful so I installed that and tried again. I wasn't in the workshop for about an hour and after coming back I heard no noise of the spindle which was pretty weird but once I touched the aluminum piece it was extremely hot probably because of friction and actually the spindle wasn't spinning so I thought that there might be a temperature sensor inside the spindle and when the temperature is too high it shuts off the spindle which makes sense but actually instead of shutting off the wool machine you know just as it is the case with the emergency button the spindle wasn't spinning but the machine was still working so if I would be like 5 or 10 minutes later in the workshop uh, I would probably break the milling bit that would be a really nice safety feature if instead of stopping only the spindle it would stop the wool machine and if there is communication between the spindle and the main controller then that's something that is super easy to add in the software while machining all the things out of wood with the CNC tool head I almost forgot that you can actually also use the module, the rotary module, with the laser tool head. So that's what I'm going to test now and we'll try to engrave some stuff on round objects. As you may know from my previous video, in order to change the module uh, you have to do that with four screws. It is not extremely quick but at the same time it takes like one or two minutes only so it is not that terrible and the table the rotary module stays in the same place there is nothing that you have to change in order to go from CNC to laser or from laser to CNC. If you watched any of my previous videos you may know that the lasers actually terrify me quite a lot so always wear the safety glasses even if the laser is not working just in case because it's really dangerous and you should always have the laser glasses on when you are working with that. I already went through the calibration process here you can see the calibration lines, I choose the thinness line and that's how you basically set the focus point of the laser and for that I used a cardboard tube. While the machine is working you can easily adjust the laser power and engraving speed on the touchscreen which is pretty useful because thanks to that you can find the proper balance in order to burn something on the material but also not burn too much. And then I made some more detailed pieces that you can see right here with really nice results. I tried engraving on white paper cup unfortunately without any luck. First thing the white material reflects a lot of light so it's hard to properly engrave on that and second thing the cup is not cylindrical there is actually a bit of a slope to the cup so it is hard to set up the focusing point properly. Of course with such a machine you could compensate for that on the z-axis unfortunately there is no such setting in the snap maker Luban. But because you are probably not going to engrave stuff on cardboard tubes, I bought a rolling pin. You know, this thing that you use in the kitchen.
This is also a max material that you can use on the rotary module. It's 60 millimeters in the diameter and this is the max dimension that you can clamp from the outside. You can also clamp stuff from the inside, for example, a water bottle. Another cool thing is that in order to create these graphics, I haven't used Illustrator, Photoshop or Inkscape. I did all that in the Snapmaker Luban. I just placed all the icons and resized them and played with the font. And that's it. You can create such a thing only in the Snapmaker Luban without any graphics software. When it comes to different materials like glass or acrylic, unfortunately, it is not possible to engrave on DOS. Maybe with anodized aluminum, it should be possible. If you have, for example, a water bottle that is made out of aluminum and anodized, it should be possible to engrave with this laser, but I haven't tried that, so I'm not 100% sure. So what are my final thoughts? When it comes to how this thing works, I really like this. I like the software, I like the engineering part. This thing is super sturdy and there is a really interesting gearing inside here and it never misses a step. It works great. When it comes to if you actually need a rotary module, it depends on what you are actually creating. I showed you a few things that I made with the rotary module and you should at least know what is possible, what's not possible to make with this machine and if you need this in your workshop, it depends on what you are actually doing. I also really like the emergency stop button and I hope that in the future it will be possible to buy it separately without the rotary module. And that's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and don't forget to check out the first video about the Snapmaker machine. Thank you very much for watching, happy making, bye.